So these arrived in the mail this week. Uh, Scale Trains released the uh, tunnel motors and I pre-ordered three of them here. Uh, one for SP, the Kodachrome, the Rio Grande, and then the Bloody Nose SP uh, with the Snoot Nose. Uh, when I ordered these, or pre-ordered these, I ordered them uh, DC slash DCC ready. So they are not equipped for DCC or sound. But I'm going to do that myself. I've done a couple already, a couple dash nines, I think, that I ordered. Um, when I did the dash nines, uh, I kind of found out it's probably just better to pay the extra hundred bucks and get them with the sound already installed. The speakers do not come with the DCC DC ready. So I have a couple of uh, these, I think they're uh, 9 by 11 millimeter sugar cube actually they're correction they're 8 by 12 millimeter sugar cube speakers that I got from uh, sbs4dcc.com and these are their own speakers they're great they're very small and thin the baffles that come with them are a little thick um, and in order to fit on Kato and some of my other models I've had to kind of sand them down but I actually have a baffle of an ESU baffle and I have cut these in half or cut them to size um, they're they're a lot thinner and um, glued those in and then put a little sliver of styrene to kind of fill in the gap because <clears throat> excuse me they're they're not they're just, they're basically for two I think they're nine by fifteen millimeter speakers combined so you have to add a little bit on there to kind of seal it up so I there's a little bit of soldering. The decoders um, that go on this this model is the uh, the D the Lock Sound Five Nano, and uh, the part number is five eight nine two five. And these are the I think the twenty five pin. They're not the eighteen. I think the eighteen's the the next generation. So double check uh, when you. Um, convert these over that you get the right decoder so we're gonna disassemble we're gonna do the Kodachrome one and I'm, I'm only doing sound on two of these I'm gonna do sound on excuse, the uh, Kodachrome one and the snoot the Rio Grande is gonna be just a low pilot so it won't have sound it will just have light effects and the reason for that is I have a, a kit bash Kato tunnel motor that I found at a train show that somebody had made and I put a uh, sound in it and extra LEDs and and uh, you know driver lights and everything. So I've already got a tunnel motor for the Rio Grande with uh, with sound. So we're just going to do uh, a pilot. But just for this one here, we're going to we're going to just take apart or take the shell off of the Kodachrome one here and uh, install the decoder and then do a little bit of wiring. And I'm going to put the foam pads back in here so I don't squash my rails when I'm picking these up. I try not to um, leave them out when I am not using them. I put them back in place so that they don't get squashed. So we'll uh, kind of clean things out here and uh, start taking the shell off. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is remove the couplers. And you'll need a very small Phillips screwdriver. Back out the screw. And a pair of tweezers here to pull it out. You gotta be careful when you're taking their stuff apart because there's a lot of extra stuff. There's hoses, a lot of things that you can snap off if you're not careful. Here with the tweezers. There we go. All right, couplers out, and then just gently pull and lift. 
and the whole shell comes off. Again, watch out. There's uh, some parts there uh, look like um, brake lines. Hydraulic lines on the side there. So I'm going to set the shell over here upside down. All right, and here is our model here. And the decoder, the blank one, I'm going to kind of point to it here, is this one right here. They got a piece of captive tape wrapped around it. In the past, I've seen them put foam here. So I'm going to cut the captain tape off and then uh, pop that out. I'm going to use a Zacto blade here. Once I find it, all right, found my Zacto blade. I'm going to carefully cut the tape here if my blade's sharp enough. Take the tweezers, carefully pull the tape off. There, all right, and then we should be able to pop out. There's the blank decoder right there. Looks like it's just a small circuit board with some diodes and a, and a capacitor on it. So we'll set that aside. Okay, I've unpackaged the uh, decoder. I'm kind of holding them side by side here. So you can see it's just a little bit longer, but uh, the same, uh, same pin there to pop it in. So here's the fun part. It's plugging these in. They can be a little tricky. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I got it on there. I had to kind of fight it. I ended up pulling off the two screws and I will point to where they are. There's one here and one over here so I can lift the board and turn it sideways. These things are a little tricky to plug in and you want to make sure you don't you get it lined up correctly. You don't force it and get it uh, twisted where it you know damages the, the pins there. So I've got it plugged in. I'm going to put the two screws back in and I'm debating whether putting a little piece of foam under there to kind of support it uh, just to keep it in place so that it doesn't pop out. So I'm going to uh, hit pause here, uh, get that done, and then we'll go from there. All right, two screws are in there. Everything's in place. And then the next step is to pull off the fuel tank here where the speaker is to be placed. These screws are real tiny also. So be careful you don't lose them. Fuel tank comes off and there is our speaker bay and looks like it's gonna fit just perfect. So, there's a, a hole in the corner there to feed the wires, and on the board here, and I may check one of my other models, but there's two solder tabs. Let's see if I get this where you guys can see it. It's got a, an, an SP and an S like an S dash and I'm pretty sure that's the speaker uh, where the speaker wires go but I'm going to double check that on another model because I don't want to uh, give you the wrong information here so we're going to check another model just to make sure that's the right tab and then I've got some wires that I will be soldering and feeding down to wire up the speaker 
Okay, I've changed venues here. I am actually in a train room at my makeshift workbench here. And so here's the speaker. I got a baffle um, glued into there. There's that little opening. I'm gonna try it without plugging that and just see what that sounds like. If it sound doesn't sound good, then I'll, like I said earlier, put some a little piece of styrene in there to seal it up. I've got the some wires, very thin wires from some uh, uh, 402 LEDs, some leftovers soldered on there. So I'm gonna feed those. There's a little slot in that corner, and drop the speaker in there, and then solder it to the board. And then I think we can go put it on the programmer track and program it. And Scale Trains has the file on their website for the tunnel motor. It's a second version, so there should be some, maybe some different uh, couple of changes here and there from the, uh, the other ones that ESU has developed for SD40s. So I'm going to pop that speaker in and do a little soldering here, and we'll be back here in a second. All right, here's the speaker wired up and installed. One thing I want to point out is the one that I'm using is a little long. And there are a couple tabs to set a different size speaker. Uh, I took my Dremel tool and uh, kind of ground them down so I could fit this one in nice and flush. I did put some masking tape over the truck so I wouldn't get any metal shavings on the gears there. So anyway, now that I've got that nice and smooth, I can set the speaker in there. And next is to put the fuel tank back on. like so I have to do some more sanding on the uh, baffle here get it down there just a little more flush all right so fuel tank cover is back on got my wires coming up here and so I just need to trim them and just solder them to the two speaker tabs there and then we're ready to get her on the program on the program track and get her loaded up with some files so we're gonna take a little pause here I'm gonna solder those wires on to the board okay speaker wires are soldered to the tabs there one says S minus and the other one says S plus for speaker so next is to put the shell back on and put on the programming track and get the decoder programmed. Also point out, I think the speaker that's designed for it, this is a ESU speaker and the dimensions, I think it's a nine by, oh, I have to look this up. I don't want to give you guys the wrong size. Anyway, uh, yeah, ESU speaker. Um, I didn't use this one. This one was in a previous locomotive, and I think it has a hole in the uh, in the head, so it rattles real bad. It's pretty much toast. These are pretty good speakers too. They're a little more expensive than the, uh, the other ones I've been in, and you can get this these dimensions also from. Uh, sbs4dcc.com uh, I'll look this up here before I complete this video let you know the dimensions if you want to go that route but in the meantime I got my other one to fit in there it's nice and snug so we'll put the shell on and get her on the program track and get some files loaded all right I have the shell back on and have it programmed. Uh, I might actually have it on right now, but uh, haven't fired up the engine. And um, yeah, getting the shell on was a little tricky. Those are the sanding valves. Those little, uh, they're wire, fortunately. They're, they're like a metal wire, so they're a little tricky um, getting 
around the trucks when you put the shell on. Uh, my advice, if you want sound, just get these. Just pay the extra hundred bucks and get them equipped with the sound. Um, this is a learning experience for me, so I think in the future if I want sound, I'll just pay the extra. Um, if you want DCC, no sound, then you're going to have to pull the shell off and drop in the decoder. At least you don't have to worry about the speaker. And I did a test fire um, with speaker and uh, it was crackling pretty bad not having the uh, baffle sealed up so I did take some a small piece of styrene plastic and uh, filled in the, the gap and then uh, put in some crazy glue there to seal it up. So it sounds a lot better. Let's fire it up right now and give it a listen. So we got the number boards at uh, F14, and then I uh, got the gyro light going, and uh, nose light, which is F0. I like that old school T3 horn. They've got, uh, on this file, they've got quite a few different um, three chime um, horn styles you can choose from. This is the stock one here. And uh, on uh, Scale Train's website, you can download the uh, file here. Uh, it's a version 2 for the tunnel motor for Southern Pacific. They also have one for uh, the Rio Grande also, if you choose to do a Rio Grande one. I did have to do some uh, customized tweaking with the um, settings, uh, mainly the gyro light. Uh, for some reason I wasn't getting the gyro light to work on the rear headlight here and uh, so I basically just dis disabled it. Now it does do a steady, a nice steady uh, light. I go backwards here. And reverse there. So we got that light there. The Mars light is not operative on in this model so uh, no Mars light, but um, number boards, like I said, are separate. And uh, anyway, one down, two more to go. Like I said, I got my snoot. I'm going to do that one next. That one will have sound. And then my Rio Grande unit is going to have just the local pilot. And that one I just have to do the decoder only. So anyway, if you want to chance it with this, more power to you. Uh, just kind of give you a heads up here what to expect. Um, handle these with care. There's a lot of small tiny parts. Oh, when I was putting the couplers on, the front one here, uh, it actually exploded and uh, came apart and I lost the spring. So, it's the spring's not on that one there. I could just replace the whole assembly if I want to, but for now I'm not going to worry about it. This is going to be a lead locomotive, so I don't think I'll have it trailing much anyway. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But uh, yeah, just be careful. Um, the screws are real small too, especially for the fuel tank. Uh, they're easy to lose. And uh, hopefully this gives you a heads up on what to expect if you want to convert these over to DCC. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, we'll see you next time on the next tutorial. Bye.